to the adventure from Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio. I'm very excited about our next guest because I just love, love musicianship. And that's something that you don't always see nowadays in the way music has become. I think sometimes we've lost some musicianship. But then there's also a comeback of artists like this next one and a lot of others that are bringing that back. So let's welcome to the show... The amazing progressive metal guitarist, Martin Gonzalez. How are you? Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> and thanks for those kind words. I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm great. And, and my pleasure, because it's true, you know, like, listen, nothing takes the place of good musicianship. You can push buttons all you want. You can use AI all you want. <laughs> and that that's all good for enhancing, in my opinion but not as a replacement. Right. I can agree, man. Especially with that AI stuff going on as of lately. Scary, man. <laughs> oh, it was scary way back when, like in the eighties, I remember telling people like, I don't like this. The machines are going to take over, <laughs> you know? And here we are. It's like reality now, but, Dude, yeah. but there are a lot of artists like you that are bringing back what things were, I say more like in the 70s and the 80s and the 60s where it was all about musicianship and, you know, especially talking about guitars, like songs nowadays are written without guitar solos because of the attention span of people out there. But also because, I don't know, I think some of these musicians nowadays are not even learning how to play guitar. They're learning enough to get by and then they use all the... Uh, you know, technology to do the rest. Right, right. Now, now I feel like people could consider their laptops as instruments, which yes, is nothing against that. It's incredible what you can do with a laptop. But now I feel you. My my passion is guitar, definitely. Like laptop is secondary. <laughs> Have you ever seen the? There's a meme out there that shows a picture of the rock star in the '80s and the rock star now. Have you ever seen this meme? Right, right. Yeah, that is like people partying and like drinking beer and then just like a nerd sitting in front of his computer. <laughs> totally. Oh, man, it's so funny, <laughs> you know, because it is pretty true. And I mean, there's a positive side to that, too, because a lot of musicians down nowadays, they are more professional and serious about it. And they, they're, you know, straight edge, a lot of them, whereas... Back in the 80s, that was true. It was, you know, massive amounts of partying. But I think that also holds to what's benefit nowadays of artists like you being able to get out there and make your own music opposed to record labels telling you what to do. Because I think what happened in the 80s is record labels threw so much money at these young kids and basically <laughs> told them what to do. That And they set them up with the party and they wanted them partying. They wanted them, you know, doing all that so they could, you know, to be blunt, screw them over. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's definitely part of their image, too. Um, yeah. Which is so funny. Let's say, like, one of my, like, one band that I admire a lot that kind of has that, like, rock and roll energy still is probably Polyphia. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, they, they still, like, they're, I assume they're definitely, like, nerds because of the music they do. But at the same time, they have that, like, rock and roll energy that is, like, what the fuck are they even doing? <laughs> right? Exactly. So a lot of your fans know you best as a composer. Uh, and what I think is really cool about it, okay, so you're the composer for popular anime franchise uh, Rooster Teeth and uh, RWBY Rooster Teeth. And uh, 
what's interesting I find about that is, so I saw this band back in the 80s when I was a freshman in high school in the beginning of the 80s. I saw this band. Um, they played in my gym in high school. And now the singer for that band is one of the biggest composers for like everything ever, like Batman and uh, The wow. Simpsons. And that's Danny Elfman from Oingo Boingo. And Oingo Boingo played in my wow. gym. So immediately when I saw that, that's who I thought of. So, so that's pretty cool. Tell us a little bit about that. Man, yeah. So the the, the company who makes the, the anime is Rooster Teeth and then the anime is called uh, Ruby. And um, honestly, See, I said it wrong. <laughs> it's um it's it's been a cool gig man it's like the first time i got to do something for um like a tv show um and to be honest uh the tv show is uh, as good as it can get at the moment <laughs> it's been like a tv show that started kind of like as a youtube thing from like kids that didn't know what they were doing <laughs> and now until there where they have like a budget where they have like real animators and real things and it became so popular i was surprised to how popular it became um but the cool thing is um i'm doing like metal music for it i'm doing like prog and i'm doing also like orchestral stuff so i was getting paid for doing the music i really love man <laughs> i love it i love it i feel like Sometimes for composers, it's like you take the gig that you have to take, uh, mm. right? Like sometimes you're like hired to do, I don't know, music for in the style of blah, 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 blah. Um, but in this case, I was literally hired to do music, the style of music that I really like to do. So um, I was like creatively very free. I like wrote that stuff, uh, obviously with direction from like the directors and so on. But um I was just, man, I was just happy playing guitar and being like paid for playing it. <laughs> I love it. And, and it's so cool that it, it kind of blows my mind as somebody that's been metalhead since like the late seventies. Okay. That you can compose metal music for a TV show in 2024. It's like totally cool to me, you know? And it's funny when you said about it because, you know, The Simpsons, which is like the longest running TV show ever, started as like a little clip on this show called The Tracy Ullman Show. It, was, it wasn't its own show. It was like a little clip. And it's just become this phenomenon. Right, right. And I feel like Danny Elfman right now, he's even playing at like metal festivals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go on tour and I do coverage of uh, uh, festivals throughout U.S., the U.K., Europe. And he's on a couple festivals that I'm looking at that I might do press for. And it kind of blows mm. my mind because he hasn't really done that that I've seen in a long time. Like, I'm sure he has, but not on like major festivals like that. So it's kind of wild going back to his roots, kind of. Right, right. I um I feel like especially now that that particular world of like composers and uh, like actual metal musicians like they are starting to merge. Um, I I know of a couple other people that are like in bands and like doing metal music that are actually writing music for video games and TV shows and film and stuff like that. So some somewhat like metal heads are taking over that stuff as well. It's pretty exciting, yeah. man. <laughs> and look and look at what happened with Stranger Things, too. Like, that's even exactly. wild. Yeah, and what's interesting, too, if you travel the world, you don't realize how metal has a place in places you wouldn't even think of. Like, currently, right now, I'm in Costa Rica. And right. I had no clue, but there's, like, a huge underground metal thing going on here. And it just, it's really cool. Blows my mind, though, because I would have never thought of that because there's like one major festival here and it's not metal. So, and so, and I had been talking about like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to start my own festival in Costa Rica. And then I came down and I, this year I came down, I was, I come down every year and I was talking to somebody that actually does different festivals and events. And he's like, oh no, we do a lot of metal stuff. It's all kind of underground type of thing. And that, that reminds me of the good old days too. Man, that's awesome. I 
honestly, if you have recommendations for like metal musicians or bands that I should listen to from Costa Rica, dude, I, I, I'll take them in. <laughs> I'll have to find them. There is one that uh, I'm forgetting the name of the band, but I was in Bali last year for two months, and there's this band there that they're they're kind of like maybe pop punk combined with metal and punk and, and they have this song called Kuda Rock City. Kuda Check Rock City. Me. I'm trying to remember the name of the band right now. I'm lo- but like they're really popular there. And I listened to them like, man, they're really, really good. I, again, never expected that in Bali for sure. You know, <laughs> and, and it's just really cool. And then I was just in Mexico a couple months ago and I saw metal stuff going on there. And I'm like, man, that, that's just ri-. speaking of which, have you ever seen that band that does the mariachi metal? Maybe, maybe. Do you know the name? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like being senile today. I'm like, right. Dang, but it's real. I know it. And it's like really good. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. There's this Mexican artist called uh, Jose Macario. Okay. He, he like he's like one of those musicians that like play a bunch of different genres from like literal like Mexican popular music to like Mexican gent. <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's super weird, man. But um, he came up with this album that blew my mind as of recently. I think like a new album that released like a week ago or two weeks ago, uh, and the band is called Ladrones. This like the thieves. <laughs> <And> <laughs> And dude, it's the weirdest fusion of music I've heard in a while. It's like, imagine like mariachi singers with like hip hop influence, like stuff, but also with gent in the background with like actual meshuga going back <laughs> in the background. Nice. And, and like, what? <laughs> I mean, I, I liked it though, but, but it's really weird music. The one that is coming up from Mexico, especially, I think. It, you know, what would be kind of cool. If you had like, and I'm saying this because it's funny, I just took a lesson uh, and I noticed, and it wasn't because him, but like, because I'm in Costa Rica, but uh, I noticed Jose from Sirius XM, he just took a lesson too. Like it was totally out of his comfort zone, totally out of mine on like salsa and merengue. And I'm thinking, <laughs> how cool would it be to have a mosh pit that was combined with salsa and merengue and bachata? You know, and, and you're doing that in the pit. That would be so funny and fun. Dude, I, I'd be, I'd be in the pit right there, dancing and 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 hitting people. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that would yeah. be so cool. And then there's this other thing. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a big thing going on with yoga to metal, which I love that because everybody associates yoga with mellow and you have this mellow like spiritual music in the background and me i sit there even though i do it i'm like getting bored after a while if you were playing like slayer while i'm doing my yoga i would do yoga all day damn dude (laughs) honestly I i found it funny how some people really find like that type of stuff relaxing like i feel like i don't (laughs) Dude, with Slayer, I would, like, not be relaxing. (laughs) Oh, Slayer, I would find relaxing. I don't find the mellow relaxing to me. It's weird. For me, it's like I I get antsy, you know? But if you gave me Slayer, I'd be totally into it. And I'd be – it's funny because I'm also a motivational speaker. And when I go and do seminars, I will crank up stuff like Slayer and Slipknot to get myself pumped up to do a seminar. Dude, that's so funny. That's awesome, though. <laughs> right, right. It, you know, it, and that's the power of music. And that's why I love musicianship, too, because it just takes you somewhere else and away from all the bull crap that's in the world. And I love that, uh, you know, a couple of singles on on your new record, they're, they're, they're both different. OK, so. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> And, and what I like about that is who does want to listen to the same song over and over again? Even if it's your favorite band, I like to hear variety. Like everybody throws shade at Bring Me the Horizon for doing different things. I'm like more power to them because I like hearing the different things, but also for the artists, I feel good for the artists because it must be boring as could be if you're pl- just doing the same 
songs over and over again with the same chords and the same riffs and you know I, right. i'm sure as a musician you'd rather just ex experiment honestly yeah dude i feel like uh well that's that's a cool thing about being independent too is just nobody tells you what you can do or what you should be doing and uh it's just cool to like not depend on anyone else's opinions or like things that they think I should be doing for them. Um, I just yeah. do it for myself, to be honest. And every song has a different purpose of like background of where I'm coming from, which this record is really personal to me. It's like every song has a, has a meaning. It's just not, God damn it, I'm receiving like a thousand texts and I don't know how to put my computer inside. That, that, might, be the, that might be the record company saying, don't yeah, say stop, that. Stop saying that. <laughs> Just like, what are you saying? You're gonna get fired. <laughs> um, but well, <laughs> imagine, just like, <laughs> um, uh, I was saying. Uh, so yeah, every song has a particular meaning to me. Um, for example, the first song is like a song about self sabotage. It's like mm. a song about like really how uh, I'm responsible for my own like type of outcome I have in life. And so I decided to do something very like heavy and aggressive or as aggressive and heavy as I can get. I've never done a song like that before. Um, and then I had my wife sing on it and she's like, Oh, that's cool. Oh, she's so freaking talented, man. Uh, now music is subjective, but I, I think she's a really sick singer. <laughs> nice. I hope so, because otherwise you're in big trouble if you right. say different. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not because she's my wife by any means, but because I just think she's a great, great singer. And um, yeah, dude, um, that song in particular was just like a song that I was like, has to be heavy. I've never done something like this. And uh, it has to be really like what encompassed my guitar playing as a whole versus the second single, uh, the one featuring Richard Henschel from Haken. It's more of a... Uh, the positive side of my life is more like just looking forward to like waking up every day and having like some sort of purpose or some well the song is called purpose but some sort of meaning something that excites you to to live your life and and, and just try to be happy so two very different concepts right one is like oh i hate myself and the other one is like nah dude you're gonna be fine <laughs> See, I love that though. You know why? Most people don't admit it. We have all of us, even the most positive of us, have all those sides. You know, it's right? Like a, you know that we're not so narrow. Like there's so many dimensions to our personality that I think we need those multiple things to kind of be balanced. You know, and I, you know, e even somebody like me, I can relate to both of those songs a hundred percent. You know, and that's the thing too. When you're a speaker, a motivational speaker, people are like, "Oh, nobody could be that positive all the time." I'm like, "No, nobody is that positive all the time. It's how much you let it affect your life and for how long." You know, we're humans. Right. Shit happens to us. We're humans, and we have emotions, and we have things that affect us. But then we have tools that can help. And to me, music is one of the greatest tools and one of the greatest therapies man it is that is true i uh, i'm glad i'm glad like you can you can see it also that way lots of people think of like well they they think of music as like they go listening to an artist and they expect something to sound the way they want it and then when mm -hmm. they don't they're like oh what is this artist doing and it's like they're probably just being honest about how they feel or whatever they're doing and that's why you don't like it <laughs> right but, and right. then that's the only way of being a good artist too is to just be yourself. If you're trying to do things for what other people want, you're not going to be as good. You know, forget the fact that somebody's being fake, just the fact of how can you be good at your craft when you are faking it? You know, exactly. if you're just being yourself, it's easy. It's just like I tell people with radio shows or like, you know, like we and doing this interview or stuff like that. I don't script it. I don't prepare like, you know, there's a little bit of preparing obviously, but I don't sit there like, Oh, I got practice, but I just get on and be myself. Cause that's what people can relate to. I'm glad the same came here. Absolutely unprepared. <laughs> Good. I love it. Cause I, the one thing, and I don't get it often, but when artists or PR people are like, can you send me the questions you're going to ask? I'm like, no, <laughs> because 
the interview takes a life of its own. And, and like, if you would have asked me before this interview, if we were talking about some of the things we've already talked about, I would have said no, because I didn't even think about it. Like it, the key to anything in life is letting life happen and then taking those life events. And that makes the conversation. I agree, dude. I totally agree. So how do people connect to you on socials, on the web? How can they get your new album, merch, anything? Right. So I always go like at Martin Gonzalez Music. Um, and that's on, I think, Twitter, YouTube. No, that's on Instagram and YouTube. And then on Twitter or now X for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go by Martin, G-O-N-A-R. Um, then I'm like, it, it should be super easy to get to like, how to buy the album or how to get to my Spotify or everything from there. Um, just look it up. It's Martin Gonzalez in Bandcamp, in Spotify, and basically every streaming service you can think of. And in Bandcamp, I'm currently running a pre-order. Um, and then as I'm releasing the singles, you can download the, the full quality version of the singles. I've seen like the full audio quality version of the singles as you, as you pre-order. Uh, nice. And the album is coming out on March 22nd, and uh, the next single is coming out on Friday, this Friday, March 1st. Ooh. Uh, and that's another song with vocals, too, so uh, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this one. This one in particular is my favorite, so I kind of like connect with me and you'll be informed <laughs> of when this drops out. Very cool. And so... Tell us about the solo record coming out on the 22nd. If you were to say what it really means to you and like what made you come up with the name for it, not, not because what does the name mean, but more of what it means to you. Right, right, right. So this record is basically a way of me trying to like breathe out all the shit <laughs> that I've been living for the past couple of years. Um, I, I I had like a year or two where I was just like confused to where I was going on with my life and just kind of like maybe doing music that I wasn't passionate about. And this is just kind of like a way to reinvent myself, to feel good about myself and to write music for me because I love it, right? So this record was like a reminder to myself about like why I'm doing this and why I want to be a musician and why I will never stop doing it. Um, so that's what the record personally means to me. Um, the name of the record is Suspiro, which means like sigh. It's like a heavy, like, uh. right. <laughs> so that's why I named it like that. Um, it's just a way of like expressing myself to my honest self right now. This is like, as good as I am in right now, there's a lot of room to grow and I hope that the next music I do is always going to be better. But this is kind of like a testament of like, this is me right now. These are my abilities. This is what I love to do. This type of music is the one that resonates with me personally the most. Um, and I decided to bring some friends along the way. Like, as I told you, um, my wife is on it, which means a lot. Uh, then I have another friend of mine called Cenk, which is a friend I met at Berklee College of Music, and he's now living in um, England. So we're really far away, but he was always like an important dude to me. Um, and then I also collaborated with Zach Singer, who is a super sick wind, like all types of wind instrument player. He's playing alto sax in one of my songs. And then Richard Henschel, which is the guitarist from Haken, which is like a dream come true because I used to listen to Haken since I was a, uh, like an early teenager. So having wow. him on the record also meant a lot to me. And it's just a way of like bringing people that I think are both talented and that I care about uh, into my own music. And it's just very fulfilling, man. Um, so that's basically what the record is to me. Uh, as I said before, just a way of nice. like letting my negative energy go and keep pursuing music with all I got. Um, it's good that that's my first record as a solo artist too. I think it has a great meaning. <laughs> so for whoever listens to it, I just hope they can get to 
made me better as a person, not just as a guitar player, because right, everyone can play guitar nowadays, but uh, maybe they'll meet me as a person just by listening. Uh, and as always, music is subjective. So whatever yeah. the music does to anyone who listens to it is uh, super welcome. And I'm super interested to know how it touches people uh, and whoever cares about it too. I love it. And, and that's why I asked that because, you know, it, one thing you said to me, it like really hit home. Like you had that rough couple of years and then like making this album is like a big sigh from that rough couple of years, which goes, you know, to the point of what I said of it's the best therapy, not just for us as the listener, but you as the artist. So this expressing on this album is getting out all that negativity and things that happened over the past couple of years. And I think that that's way healthier than any of the big pharma drugs that people give. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, man. Agreed. <laughs> Love it. Well, thanks a lot for giving us great music and being a great musician. And thanks for being on the adventures of Pipe Man. Dude, thank you so much for having me. That was a pretty dope chat. Um, hope it's not the last one we have, too. It won't be. And I love hearing that feedback, too, because sometimes for artists, doing press is not the fun part of the job. And that's why I'd rather make it fun. So thanks. Right. Well, it, it totally depends, man. But you're, you're a cool guy. So I, I look forward to, to talk to you again sometime. Ditto. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.